many of you here are ready to experience the power of God today? Amen? Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want you to greet someone beside you. Give that person a big hug. Tell that person, you look terrific. <laughs> and if that person beside you happens to be a woman, whether that be your wife or your mother or your daughter or your friend, tell that person, beautiful woman, you really are beautiful. That's right. There was this one woman who came up to me and she said, you know, Bo, I really love the feast. And, and I thought she would say, you know, because I'm so blessed by the worship or by the music or by the talk or by the atmosphere. And she said, I love going to the feast because it's the only time my husband says that I'm beautiful. But I have news for you. Ask me what? It is not a human being only that says you're beautiful, that you look terrific, that you're a wonderful person. You have a God that looks at you and gets teary-eyed when He does. And He tells you that you are incredibly fascinating, phenomenal, fantastic. You are a wonderful person. You are the song of His morning. You are the joy of His heart. You are His treasure. This is the God that you worship and this is the God that is here in our midst. Are you ready to be very blessed? There must be people here who have come for the first time. Can I see a raise of hands? If you're a first timer here, just want to welcome you. Just want to thank you for being here. Thank you so much. God bless you. I hope you make this your spiritual home. After the feast, we're going to give you a welcome gift. All you have to do is go to the lobby and get that gift. Thank you so much for coming. My dear friends, I know that some of you are facing trials. How many of you have some problems that you're facing right now? Just be honest with me and be honest with God. My news for you is this. Whatever problem you're going through, it cannot compare to the power of God that is within you and around you. Your trial, your adversity, your difficulty, your storm, whatever problem you're going through right now, it is but a small thing compared to the power of God. Everybody say, power of God. I want you to put both hands over your chest and say, I'm powerful. You are powerful because God is powerful and the powerful God that we worship dwells within you. Do you understand that? You are so powerful. Tell someone beside you. Touch someone say, you are powerful. You really are. And sometimes we underestimate ourselves. We underestimate the power of God within us. And that's why we feel down. That's why we get discouraged. That's why we are, we are despairing at times. Sometimes we lose hope. Sometimes we want to give up. Do you, do you feel sometimes that you're down and you want to give up? Friends, God's power. We're, we're going to talk about that today. You're going to hear God tell you that you are powerful. If you are ready to be blessed, then let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I will bless the world in Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In Luke chapter 7 verse 1 it says, When Jesus had finished saying all these things to the people, he went to Capernaum. A Roman officer was there and had a servant who was very dear to him. Everybody say Roman officer. The other versions say centurion. Everybody say that. 
Very good. The man was sick and was about to die. So when the officer heard that Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his servant. They came to Jesus and begged him for help. Uh, earnestly, this man really deserves your help. He loves our people and he himself built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with him. He was not far from the house when the officer sent friends to tell him, Sir, sir, don't trouble yourself. I do not deserve to have you come to my house. Neither do I consider myself worthy to come to you in person. Just give the order. Can you say that? One more time. You know, the, the Roman officer, the centurion, just told Jesus, You know, Lord, just say the order. Just give the order and my servant will get well. And then verse 8, this is, this is powerful. This is the, the thing I want you to, to receive. I too am a man placed under the authority of superior officers. And I have soldiers under me. A centurion would have about 83 soldiers under him. I order this one, go, and he goes. I order that one, come, and he comes. And I order my slave, do this, and he does it. Jesus was surprised when he heard this. He turned around and he said to the crowd following him, I tell you, I have never found faith like this one, not even in Israel. Everybody say that again. I'm powerful. The Roman officer was saying, Jesus, if you just give the order. Everybody say that again. If, if, if you just give the order, it's going to happen. And my friends, the power that Jesus used to heal that servant, He just gave the order. He just wished. And something happened. That same power is at work in us. We're going to find that out in Scripture today. That you are more powerful, more powerful than you ever thought possible. Put your hand over your chest. And everybody say this, Father in heaven, I am facing some trouble, some struggle in my life right now. Today, I'm going to open up very wide to receive your word. Open my eyes, Lord, to see the power, the innate power, the ability, the capacity, the gift that you have given to me to give an order. Father in heaven, I need your miracle. I need your blessing. I need your touch today. Let me go home changed, transformed, a new person, empowered, equipped, energized in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Hallelujah. Can you hug someone beside you again? Tell that person you will go home transformed. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the feast and welcome to the happiest place on earth. We are in our series, Wish. Everybody say, Wish. And we're in the second part of the series and I want to talk about how to wake up your wish. Can you touch someone beside you? Tell that person, wake up. And especially not only wake up, but wake up your wish. Wake up the desire that is in your heart. Wake up. And my big message for you is this. Are you ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. When you send out a wish, you move God's universe to action. Did you get that? When my 10-year-old boy was but a baby and sometimes it's so difficult to imagine that this 10 year old guy here 
was once upon a time a baby, but he was, believe me. And he was a three-month-old baby, and we were first-time parents. And then it happened. He began to cry at three o'clock in the morning. Is this, does this sound familiar to you, some of you here? He began to cry and cry and cry. He was screaming his head off. And so we were there and this never happened to us. And whatever we did before did not work. He did not and was not stopping. He just kept on crying and crying and crying. We, we gave milk. We, we, we placed aceite de manzanilla on the stomach. We changed the diaper. We cradled him in our arms. Do, do, dee, da, do, 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 dee. Oh, we made it a bit faster. Do, do, dee, da, do, 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 You know, after about 30 minutes of non-stop, ear-piercing, crying, screaming, we just were beside ourselves. You know, we were first-time parents. We were terrified. What is happening to our baby? You know, I was so desperate. I did the most unthinkable thing. Ask me what I do. Just ask me what. I placed down my baby, put him in the crib, and then, and then knelt down. And I said, baby, baby Bennett, what? Do you want? I'm gonna give it to you right now, but you've got to tell me what do you want? And do you know what my baby said? You want to know why I told you that story? Ask me why. Because I believe it's a perfect picture of what is happening right now. I believe that the entire universe, all of God's creation is bending down, kneeling in front of every single human being. The universe like a servant saying, what do you want? We'll give it to you. And do you know what many people say? That's what people say. Because they do not know what they want. And that's why I'm preaching that you need to wake up your wish. Because if you know what you want, and this is my belief, if you know what you really want, our ask me, what's the problem? Our problem is that we are fuzzy. Say that with me. Tell someone beside you, fuzzy. Fuzzy means you, your, your wishes are discombobulated. You, you've got a wish, but you've got another wish, and you've got this other wish, and it's not clear. It's, 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 you, what's happening is this. You're, everybody say this word, conflicted. Do you know why sometimes your wishes are not granted? Ask me why. Everybody say this word, sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't have all the answers. But I do believe that sometimes our wishes are not granted because they are conflicted. Everybody say that. Not only are they, the wishes, conflicted, but you yourself are conflicted. Let me give you an example. Can I? I wish for A. But I also wish for B. And A and B are conflicted. You got me? No, you didn't. One more time. I'm conflicted because I wish for A and I wish for B and A and B cannot coexist. At least in my mind. Some years back, I had that conflict. I was a missionary. And my wish was to be a missionary for the rest of my life. But a part of me also wanted to become a millionaire. And so how could you reconcile being a missionary and a millionaire? And so they were in conflict. 
in my mind it could not reconcile. Did you get me? And so, yes, I was a missionary, but I had such a hard time in my businesses and trying to earn money because in my mind it was conflicted. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And maybe right now there is a conflict in your wishes and that's why at least in your mind you could not reconcile. And what you cannot reconcile in your mind, you cannot reconcile in reality. It was only until, say that word, until, until I reconciled both and I said, this is how it will work. I can remain a missionary and become a millionaire. And it was only when I was able to reconcile it did that wish happen and come true. How many of you here, I'm going to give you another example. How many of you here are, you, you see, here's the point. It's not the most common thing in the world where you, where you have wish A and then you, you have another wish, wish B, and then they conflict with each other. There is another conflict and it's more within you. And, and it is this. Are you ready? You wish for A. A part of you wishes for A. But another part of you is afraid of A. You didn't get that. You, you want and desire for A. Oh, it is your dream. But another part of you is totally terrified of A. No wonder, you know, the, the universe, God's creation is dealing down and saying, what do you want? But it gets a confused, conflicted order. You're in a restaurant and you're saying, I want adobo, but no, 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 make it pochero. No, 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 make it. Uh, you know. The waiter is saying, what do you want, sir? Are you listening to me? Single people, raise your hand. Do you want to get married? Yes. I love your smiles. Yes. Of course. But please understand, singles, that some of you, you want to get married, but you are also terrified of marriage. And no wonder why you're still single. You, you want marriage. You dream about it. You talk about it. You think about it. You write it down in your journal. You make it your prayer. You make it your petition. You put it at number seven in your novena to God's love. And you... Every, every single wish has been, has been granted already. One, two, three, four, five, six is check marks already. But the number seven still is there. It's not yet fulfilled. And, and maybe just, everybody say maybe. I, I'm not sure. You know, maybe it doesn't apply to all of you. I'm sure. But I am, sh I am sure that maybe some of you are going through this. That you are terrified of the process of getting married. You are afraid of rejection in courtship. You are afraid of having a broken heart. You are afraid of a failed relationship. You are afraid of the burdens of married life. You are afraid of the difficulty of parenthood. You are afraid of the financial difficulty when you do get married and you're responsible for a family and a household. Are you listening to me? And so all those desires and, their, and the fears, they, they do not reconcile. And so you are conflicted. And no wonder. I meet a lot of people who want to become rich. And I see the same thing. They want to be rich. A part of them says, I want to become rich. But they also are afraid of becoming rich. Ask me why. Because it is unfamiliar territory. For the longest time, they were not rich. And they're already familiar. No matter how painful it is, paying off credit card debts and, and trying to make ends meet. No matter how painful it is, where you have to fit the budget with your money. And you, you have, it is so painful when you want to help someone and you cannot help. All of that is painful. But at least it's familiar. And what is familiar is comfortable. Are you getting me? And so you wish to get rich. But a part of you is afraid of being rich because it is unfamiliar. And because you are afraid, then you back off. And then you are sending out a conflicted, confused, fuzzy wish 
The order has been made, but the order cannot be addressed. It cannot be fulfilled because it is confused. You are afraid that you will be a bad person when you become rich. You are afraid of the people who will not like you anymore when you become rich. You are afraid of the criticism that you will receive when you become rich. You are afraid that your life will become complicated when you become rich. You are afraid of the problems that will come your way when you become rich. Are you listening to me? But you know what? Whether you're poor or whether you're rich, you're going to have problems, right? Just a different set of problems, that's all. But you will have problems. But you see, because of all these fears, the reason why some of you are not yet able to increase in your finances and become rich is because you are afraid. You have a conflict within you. And so as I share this with you, you might ask me, Bo, what should I do? You see, there is God's creation as a servant kneeling down in front of you, waiting for your order, waiting for your wish. But the universe responds only to clarity. Say that word. You've got to be totally clear about what you want. You've got to drive out the conflicts in your mind and in your heart and in your emotions. You've got to clear the way. Make your wish and your order so clear without any fear. Conquering the fear and pursuing the wish. And the way to do that is what we're doing today. Last night, my family and I, we were around the table and we were sharing our dream boards. We were sharing our wish colored dream board. And a few days ago, my son Francis, he's five years old and he made his dream board. And I'm going to show it to you. His first dream here is to ride a kayak. Here, he is a chef cooking. Here he is in Florida, SeaWorld. That's supposed to be a fish. And here, this is Francis holding a microphone and that's his audience. He wants to be a preacher. You can just see the, the smile on his face as he was making this, you know. And the way to become clear with what you want is actually to write it down, to make it visual. And that's why I love the Novena to God's Love because we're making it in written form. And then looking at it, and then looking at it again and again and again until it becomes clear. Until the conflicts and the cobwebs are removed. It, it takes some time for you to make your wish clear. But the moment it becomes clear, something begins to happen. At five years old, he is doing this. Imagine how clear it will become as the years go by. I'll show you my dream board. May I? The whole dream board is based on Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. It talks about, Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 talks about trees planted beside streams of water. The roots are near the river and that's why it is always has fruits in season and the leaves never wither. And then it says in verse 3 that they always will prosper. This is my two boys and their trees and there's fruits all over the trees they're planted beside the river the river is a symbol of God and these are the rest of my family members my sisters my brother-in-law 
all of that. I want them to be also trees planted near the river. And I want them to be nourished by the river of God. I want them to prosper and be blessed. And see all these trees? And see that? That's the 1,000 feasts that we will have one day. Planted beside the river of God. And you see that? When I retire, I want to donate 1 billion pesos as a trust fund for the Light of Jesus family. And all they have to do is get the interest every year and use it for leadership development. That's why I put it fertilizer. Fertilizers to help the trees grow. And that's, this is my retirement dream. When I'm in my senior years, that's me and that's my wife, Maru, and we're riding a plane. And my dream is that when, 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 when we're in our senior years, we will be traveling the world and I will no longer be in the government of light of Jesus. I will just be a preacher going around different feasts and if they want to, they could make me preach. If not, it's okay. I could just be part of the crowd. And I'll just be going around the world and in between Sundays, I will excuse myself and bring out my dream girl to an exotic vacation somewhere in the world. So there, that's, that's my dream board. And to have it, it was so easy to make this because I've, I've been thinking about it. And, and every day I think about it and it, it's so clear. The moment it becomes clear, it, it's, you, 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 you see something happening in all of God's creation. It's, it's, it's as though, you know, everything comes into order. And I know I've shared this story before, but let me share it again. That many, many years ago, almost 15 years ago, I came home from a prayer meeting and I was so struck by a verse in the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And that verse says, God says, I have set before you a choice between blessing and curse. Now, the reason why I was so inspired by that verse, because I thought blessing and curse set before me. I, I always thought that blessing and curse fell from the sky. You're walking in the sidewalk, and then, oh, ow, blessing. Thank you. You're walking, and then, ouch, oh, curse. You know, I, I always thought, but no, the Bible is saying, I have set before you blessing and curse. Choose what you want. Struck was I so much by that verse that I went home and I said, Lord, can I really choose the blessings? And I felt God was telling me, yes. And so I got, I sat down and I started writing all the blessings I wanted in my life for my future. All my dreams, all my wishes. And I wrote down 15 pages of everything that I wanted to do with my life. I wrote down that I will get married one day and I will be the greatest husband my wife can ever have. I will bring her out on a romantic date at least once a week for the rest of our married life. I wrote down there that I will be the greatest father my kids will ever have and I'll play with them every day. I wrote down there that I wrote about our ministry. I said that I will be a best-selling author. You know, when I wrote that down, I laughed. I will be a best-selling author. <laughs> because in college, I had a subject, English 103, an essay writing subject. And every essay I submitted to my professor came back to me with a big letter F. It did not mean fantastic or fabulous, you know, just... I was not a good writer, but I wrote it down. One of my wishes, one of my dreams, I will be a best-selling author sharing the love of God through books. I will have a radio program. We will have a TV ministry. We will have a ministry for the poorest of the poor. Anawim. It will be on a big property. I will live with the poor. I will live in a Nipah hut. A small Nipah hut. And it, it, there was, I, I filled it up with details. And it's so good to have details because it clarifies. And the universe responds to clarity. I wrote down there that I will stand up on the porch of my Nipah hut. And when I stand up there and look at the right, there has to be a rice field. 
When I look in front, there has to be a fish pond. When I look behind the nipa hut, there should be a coconut tree. Ask me why. Kasi bagay siya. Coconut tree, you know, nipa hut. And the great thing that, I, I really believe this, you know, as, as I began to look at these 15 pages, the great secret I tell people is this. You see, most of those dreams have come true. Most of them. And my secret is that I read those 15 pages every day. Every time I wake up, part of my prayer time was to go through these 15 pages and read them. Sure, I, I began to memorize them, but that's the point. The point is to wake up and to remind yourself what your desire is, what your wish is, what your dream is. Because every time you do that, you clarify. In your mind, you remove the conflicts, the cobwebs, whatever prevents you from fulfilling that wish. And you want to know what has happened so far? I did get married, and I do have wonderful boys now. I remember one time, I, we, 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 we've had, for the past 12 years, my wife and I have always had this weekly romantic date. And in one of those dates, I remember some years back, in the middle of dessert, she held my hand. She looked me in the eye and she said, Bo, you are a great husband. And my heart felt it had wings. I wanted to tell her something I did not. I wanted to tell her that's in page 3, paragraph 4 <laughs> of something that I wrote some years ago. It was my wish. It was my dream. It was, you know, I play with my kids every day. At least I try to. No matter how busy I am, I play with them because it's a dream. It's a wish. It's, it's what's in my heart. I have become a best-selling author. Two days ago, I counted. I, I lost count. And now I know 21 books. Every single one of them a bestseller. I say this not to boast. Please, I do not need to. But I am trying to impress upon you, not to impress you, but to impress upon you that you have power when you wish. We do have a radio program. We do have a TV ministry. And Anawim, oh, let me tell you that story. On that day when I was... We were tucking the abandoned elderly people to bed and saying good night to them. The guy in charge of building our houses came up to me and whispered and said, Bo, we finished your Nipah hut this, this today and you can sleep there now. We put a nice little mat and you can sleep there tonight. And I said, thank you so much. And so it was about 9 o'clock in the evening when I walked into my Nipah hut. I stood on the porch and I began to cry. I began to cry because when I looked at my right rice field, when I looked in front, fish pond, when I looked behind me, coconut tree, I cried because I told myself, a few years ago this was but words on paper, but now they have become reality. You are powerful. You just don't know it. That when you wish, when you send out a wish, you move God's universe to action. Really. Really. And that's why in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, I'll just give you that one verse. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks will receive and anyone who seeks will find and the door will be opened to you. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a stone when he asks for bread? Or would you give him a snake when he asks for a fish? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things. Everybody say good things. To your children how much more then will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him in matthew 18 there is this other verse and it's in verse 19 and it says this are you with me 
And so I tell you, what you prohibit on earth will be prohibited on heaven, and what you permit on earth will be. Verse 19, I tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree about anything, everybody say agree. What you pray for, it will be done for you. You know, the Bible talks about agreeing. Like, I have an intention. I go to someone beside me and I say, can you pray for this intention? And the Bible says that it's more powerful than just praying alone. I go and I say, please pray for the same thing. Where two or three agree on anything, it will be done. I received a letter from a guy. His name is Joseph. And he, t he asked me this question. And I think I shared this with you last week, but I'll share it again just to em emphasize it some more. He said, Brother Bo, why is it that it's more powerful if I ask someone else to pray with me? Why is it that I have to pray to the saints or to Mother Mary to pray for me and with me for my own intention? I mean, is God like a politician moved by numbers? Do you get his question? Is God, you know, waiting in his palace and if there's one person asking for a request, God will say, hmm, we'll see. We'll see. And then I, I get a friend and I get somebody else and I get somebody else and we're four people and then we shout our request and God will say, hmm, okay, I'm, I'm a little bit moved, but not yet enough. And so we, we gather 10 more and then 20 more and 30 more people and we have a rally and we've, we've, got, we've got placards and we're saying, give us our request, give us our request and give us a request and we've got, we make enough noise that God is saying, hmm, I'm hearing you now. I'm hearing you now. Okay, okay. Mapilit kayo. Here it is. Does God work that way? What do you think? What do you think? This is our old theology. This is how we understood God before. And we're debunking it right now. We are saying, no, God cannot operate in that way. That is silly. And that's true. It is silly. And here's the truth. When you pray, you do not change the mind of God. When you pray, you do not change the mind of God. You change your mind. You become clear with your wish. You become clearer and clearer every time you pray. You become clearer and clearer with what you want. And there is more power when you become clearer with what you want. Are you listening? When I was a small boy, I loved peanut butter. I still love peanut butter, but never mind. And when I would open a jar, because of my small hands, I could not open it. And so I would give it to my sisters, and my sisters would open the jar. But then as I was growing older, and my hands were getting bigger, I would try. Every time there's a new peanut butter jar. How many of you sometimes have a difficulty when, there's, when the jar is new? Right? You've got that difficulty? You know? I, I would try. I was getting bigger. My hands were getting bigger. I would put my hands in the palms of my sisters in exactly the same size. And so I would open and try to open and it would not open. And then I would give it to my sister and my sister would... And I felt so embarrassed. You know, as a small boy, I would say, why can I not open those jars? And then I grew up and I realized one thing. There was one difference between me and my sister. Ask me what? I've got sweaty palms. My sisters had dry palms. It was just that. I, would pro I was probably stronger than my sisters. Do you, do you understand me? I was probably stronger than my sisters, but my sisters had dry palms. They had a grip. Say grip. You know, when you have a grip, just a little bit of strength, if your palm is attached to the cap of that jar, you can open that jar. It's not just strength. There are so many people here who have enough strength to open the jar of success, the jar of abundance, the jar of wishes fulfilled. You have enough gifts, you have enough talents, you have enough intelligence. What you sometimes lack is grip. You have not gripped, you have not grasped, you have not cleared your wish. You lack the grip of what you really, really, really want. Do you understand? 
You are fuzzy. You are fuzzy. And that's why the universe is confused. It does not know what to do. Do you understand? And what we're doing with these wishboards is trying to help you get a grip on what you want. Tell someone beside you, get a grip. Get a grip on what you want. We suffer from sweaty palms. We suffer from our grip slipping from what we want. Let me give you an extreme example. May I? Extreme, extreme example of this one woman I was praying for. I sensed that she was asking for prayer, for healing, but it was as though she did not want to be healed. I sat down and I listened to her story, and this is her story. When she got married, she married a bum. And so she had to be the man in the house. She had to be the leader of the household. She had to be the priest of the family. But not only that, she was the eldest of her family. And all her siblings were bums. And she, she was the breadwinner of two families. Even the brothers, the younger brothers that she had, they were jobless and they all depended on her. And every day she would wake up early in the morning and she would cook for the family and she would go to work and she, she was a great worker and she earned lots of money. She brought it home and she fed her family and she fed her siblings and she sent them all to school. But there was a point and I believe, and, and this is my suspicion, this is not fact, this is suspicion and this is from a curious mind. I dare say that perhaps she wished her sickness. That she was so drained and so exhausted she wanted escape and her subconscious mind began to play how can I escape how can I escape get sick and so she began to get sick of cancer and then all of a sudden instead of serving others others were serving her and all of a sudden everyone had to scramble for dear life to stand up on their two feet and even her husband had to go out and find work are you listening to me and so this woman was asking for healing, but somewhere in my heart, I sensed that she had a conflicted wish. She wanted to be healed, and yet she was asking, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. I like what's happening right now. Extreme example, but this is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to ask you now to clarify in your mind. There are no double wishes. There's no, I, I want wish A, but I'm afraid of wish A. It cannot, it does not work. It's got to be clear in your heart and in your mind. What do you want? Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? If you brought out if you brought your dream boards, please do it. If you have novenas to God's love in your pockets, please bring it out. If you don't have any of these, that's fine. There's next week. I want you to bring your su this coming Sunday your dream boards. If you lost it, if, if you were not present last Sunday, you, don't have, you were not there to receive a dream board, it's okay. Go to a bookstore, buy a board, and then draw or, or cut out pictures or what have you. And we're going to lift it up to God. Are you ready? I want you to show your seatmate your dream board if you do have one. Just tell them about your dreams and tell them that this is what you want to happen in your life. Maybe you want a new house or maybe you want a new car or you want a job or you want a new ministry or you, you want an education for the kids or I don't know what dream board you've got, but show it to someone beside you and say, this will happen. Are you ready to pray? I want you to lift up your dream board. And if you don't have a dream board, that's fine. Lift up all your dreams. But you've got to be clear with what you want. And everybody, Father in heaven, I come before you and look at your congregation, look at your people, look at your children coming to you with all their dreams and all their wishes. We're sending out orders right now. We're giving an order to God's creation. Is it a clear wish in your heart right now? No conflicts. Search your heart. Pray with me. Father in heaven, I lift up 
all my wishes to you. And I now give an order to your creation. I am now sending a wish. And I am moving the universe to action. Fulfill the desires that you have placed in my heart. In Jesus' name. I want you to get a grip on your wish, on what you really, really want. And believe with all your heart. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I love you. Thank you. Do you see your dreams being fulfilled? See it in your mind. And as we sing these songs, we just pray that God will increase the faith that's in our heart. May we have the centurion's faith. Amen. Yeah. 
of heaven and earth creator of the entire universe we your children come before you today who were once lost but now found that for a time we refused to listen but now hears your words of life and love as we gather today to honor to adore and worship and glorify your most holy name for you, O oh Lord, you are an omnip omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. Amen. A God who has almighty and all power, ever present and all knowing God. That even before we think, that even before we make plans, utter and articulate and pray with all our needs, with all our wants, and even our heart's desires. You have constantly and consistently been there for us each step of the way. Oh, yes. Listening to every word that we say, empathize to every pain that we feel, and to cry with us with every sorrow that life allows us to experience each day. Oh, yes. But through it all, O oh Lord God, we place our total and complete and absolute trust and faith in you. Amen. For every goal that has to be reached, for every aspiration that has to be fulfilled, wishes and dreams that are yet to come true. Amen. For we know that you are a father who knows not just things that are good, but rather a father who knows what is best for us, your children. Hallelujah. For you know what is best for us, O oh Lord God. So Father, as you have said, that when we remain in you and your words remain in us ask for anything and they shall be given and they will all be done unto us as what your mother mama mary said thy will be done Amen. today we all pray like jabez prayed oh lord that you bless us that you may multiply increase our territories and that your hands be upon us and deliver us from every evil and all of this we pray in the mighty sweetest healing powerful name of jesus christ our lord and savior amen and amen amen amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. i want you to pray with one another we're going to apply Matthew chapter 18 when we when we read that where two or three agree on anything it shall be done there, it's not because God is impressed by numbers or God is moved when two or three people no 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 it's just that you become clearer with what you want and so you are moved but not only you are moved but for some magical mysterious reason when a lot of people come and pray for one thing somewhere somehow we send our wishes more wishes and m more power is sent to God's creation and God's creation responds where there is clarity and so I want you to you know maybe break up into two people or three people around you and just start praying together praying for what God wants for each of you maybe some of you are praying for something and just agree together what to pray for go ahead Tell someone, tell a seatmate what you want to be prayed for. And then tell, listen to that person as well. Agree on one thing. Agree on two things. Just pray together. from you oh Lord God we cannot do anything and we are nothing 
that if we remain in you and abide in your words, everything shall happen. That gives you life and fullness. Harden not your heart, that your joy may be complete. I have kept you in my arms Now all your tears and troubles gone No one has greater love than this Cause I laid my life for you trust him you know for some of you the, the the message for you is just to trust in me trust in your God you know what you want already you trust in God that he will give you always the best amen, amen. can you just lift up your hands like this if you're comfortable with this posture lift up your hands and just say Lord, Lord I trust you I trust you you will give me the best. You will give me the best. I believe the best is yet to come. I believe that the best is yet to come. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Amen. Oh, encourage someone beside you. Hug someone beside you. Please tell that person the best is yet to come. Best is yet to come. <laughs> Amen.